In this video, I'm going to show you five ways to look instantly younger using makeup. So I'm going to start with foundation. I'm going to use the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in Patagonia. Now, the reason I'm going to use this foundation is it's lovely and light. I think it's a great spring foundation. It doesn't give full coverage. It's easy to apply, but the technique we're going to use is we are not going to apply it all over. And this is something that I remember Bobby Brown saying a long, long time ago, just put it where you need it. And for me, I've realized that because I get really dry patches here and here, and I could add cream, I could add moisturizer, which I sometimes have done, but then I end up getting milia because my skin is not really dry. It's just got the odd dry patch. It's actually quite normal. I would say it's not really even combination. It used to be combination, but I think it's just normal now. And so if I add extra moisturizer, and by the way, I'm wearing um, just vitamin C serum and then an SPF on top. And I'll list everything down below for you, all my products that I'm using on my face. I find that I get milia. And in fact, I've got one here somewhere and I've also got one down here because I was getting some dry patches there. So I've stopped using extra moisturiser. I'm just using my SPF, which is a, a moisturiser really. And I'm only applying foundation where I need it. Anyway, it <laughs> was a long preamble. It's almost already started running down my face, but let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to apply it with a sponge but I'm just not going to apply it where I don't need it or at least where my dry patches are, but it won't look, I'll make sure that it doesn't look patchy. So let's make a start. I'm using a dry sponge. I may moisten it at some point. In fact, you know what? I think I will. I'm going to use my Beauty Pie um, setting spray for that because I don't really want a very wet sponge because a wet sponge is no good. I mean, I know they then sort of swell up into a huge blob but um, we don't really want that we just want a little bit of moisture if anything so I'm going to avoid the areas round my nose and right here that's what I'm going to do so let me smooth it I don't know why I was patting there I actually need to smooth it I'm just going to get my mirror and make sure that I'm doing what I need to do I must one day get one of those big mirrors that I know a lot of YouTube creators have but they're so expensive there's one Got the company now it's got a funny name nothing related to mirrors at all it's about 400 quid or something i just don't know i suppose i ought to invest in it really but this seems like a huge amount of money for a mirror but i suppose it's because it's one of those lit up jobbies sorry let me just um let me just do this so what we're doing is we're giving our skin some coverage very light coverage it has to be said but coverage nonetheless but we're not going to cover everything. Now, in fact, the other areas that I'm not going to uh, put foundation on are my crow's feet and under my eyes. I'm not going to go anywhere near those parts of my face. So can you see I've got some coverage, but I haven't put anything here. I know it might look a bit red, but um, we can deal with that in a minute. And I haven't put anything here. So I've literally, and I've not, not put any foundation here or under my eyes either. I have put it round here though. So I think that's enough coverage for now. And when we go to concealer, I can always add a little bit of concealer if I need to and do some blending just so that I don't look like I've got sort of patches that I've kind of forgotten to put foundation on, which of course I haven't, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a natural makeup look, a natural foundation look that doesn't look like I've got any foundation on because after all, this is a spring makeup. We want it to look light and we want it to look fresh and we want it to look youthful. Okay, I think that's cracked it because we haven't got any dry patches here or here. Right, the next tip is use a light concealer. Now this concealer, oh my gosh, I can't remember how I discovered it. I think I might have just gone into Boots and browsed the shelves and found it. And it is the Revolution IRL Filter Finish Concealer. And it's beautifully light. It really is a fantastic concealer i to remember who else mentioned it. Oh, I know who it was. It was um, Pampered Wolf. It was Gemma from Pampered Wolf. She mentioned it. Now, whether she mentioned it before I bought it or not, I can't remember. But anyway, I absolutely love it. And it's got a great angled doe foot, which is really helpful for applying 
your concealer. And what we're going to do, we're just going to be really careful. I am going to put it straight onto here because I'm going to shear it out, obviously. And I'm not putting any on my eyelids, but more of that later. And I'm going to avoid my crow's feet. And I think just because we were super careful with the foundation, there might be some little bits and bobs that I've missed um, that I need to touch up. So let's just check. I mean, actually, I think it's fine. Maybe, ah, you know what? We'll do a little bit round here. And maybe just a bit on the nose as well. A little bit here. Right, let me come a bit nearer and just show you what I'm going to do. We're going to be very careful with the application of the concealer so that we don't get it into any areas where we don't want it to accentuate any lines. So we're just being super careful. And then once I've got the concealer on, I will be setting it with powder. Right, I'm just going to set the concealer with my powder. And I always use my Hollywood Flawless Filter powder by Charlotte. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, I think everybody that I've seen or most people of my sort of age on YouTube talk about how great this powder is. It is just the absolute business for me. Now, just a reminder, we're not going anywhere near the eyelid, which you will we'll come to in a moment. We're just doing powder underneath. You see, that's instantly mattified on my under eyes, but not too much so they don't look wrinkly and crinkly. They look nice and smooth or as smooth as they're going to look at my age. OK, now my next tip is to not overdo your brows. Now, I've been guilty of this. Guilty. I have overdone my brows quite a lot over the years. I've made them look a bit harsh. But I've now discovered through Maggie D, my lovely friend on YouTube, the NYX Thick It Stick It Eyebrow Mascara. And I find that this gives a really, really natural look. It doesn't overdo the brows. It doesn't make them look too heavy. And because our features, I know we want our features to stand out a little bit because as we get older, they tend to sort of recede a bit. And the only thing that really starts to stand out is our nose. But I don't think heavy brows, unless you've got particularly thick hair and thick brows anyway, heavy brows don't really suit a face like mine, I don't think. And I think they can look quite aging and overly made up as well. And actually, a real proponent of this is somebody who is about my age, I think, and that's Mary Greenwell, a fantastic makeup artist, very popular in the 80s, 90s, well, very popular now. And actually, during lockdown, she did a lot of Instagram videos and she talked about not doing her brows at all. Now, she's completely different colouring to me. She's very pale. And actually, she's got pink hair as well, which is fabulous. I'll link all her details down below for you so you can check her out. But she doesn't do her brows at all. Now, I'm not suggesting I don't do them, but I'm going to use this Thicket Stick in. And I'll show you how I use it. And I think it does make the brows look really natural. As you can see, I haven't got a lot of hair. I'm not at all hairy. Here's the wand and it has fibres in it. And what I do is I start by adding some colour to the brows. Let me come as close as I can and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm adding some colour by swiping, oops, a bit of a blob there, swiping the colour across the brows like this to add colour and depth to the brows. Now we've got some colour on here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the brush and we're going to fluff them up like this. I'm just raising my brows and fluff them up so it's already dried a bit. I might add a bit more colour the hair actually, just a little bit. And then fluff them up like that. And then fluff this side up because that's also dried a bit. It dries very, very quickly this. And there you are. You see, now I think that looks really natural, but it's not as heavy as my previous brow application. Now let's talk about blush and this new to me technique of using a cream blush, and I, it's only because I found this fantastic Revolution cream blush that I'm actually using cream blush again, because I had some beautiful milk makeup cream blushes, but unfortunately I found out they had fragrance in them, they were giving me contact dermatitis. And also the e.l.f. blushes that I used to really like in the summer, I just found that they were actually too shimmery for me, and I went off them, so I'd given those away. But this beautiful, beautiful 
Revolution blush, cream blush is absolutely gorgeous. Although I've just discovered Merit have come to the UK and I'm definitely going to be getting hold of one of their cream blushes because they look absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, in the meantime, all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to swipe it like this. Now let me come closer. So we're going to swipe from here to here. Oops, like that. Now I know I've come quite close to my folds if you like but don't worry about that because we're going to get the sponge I'm just going to move that up so it won't come too close <clears throat> excuse me I've gone a bit croaky I mean that is a beautiful colour isn't it it really is gorgeous and I think cream blusher in the spring summer is definitely the way to go because I mean, unless you're going to a um, a do or something, you might be going to a wedding or a party or something, in which case you can add some powder blush on top. I think a cream blusher is lovely. And I do find this one lasts really well, actually, I have to say. I mean, I think that gives a really lovely flush to the face without looking overly rougey, as it were. I think that looks great. And actually, I'm going to dab a tiny bit on my nose. I know that's the cold girl look, but I quite like it. It just gives a bit more sort of youthful, youthfulness, is that a word, to my skin. Now, I am going to add some bronzer, seeing as how this is a sort of get rid of, get rid of me. <laughs> get ready with me. Don't get rid of me. And I'm going to go back to my old favourite, the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick. And this doesn't have fragrance in it, weirdly. So why the blushes do, I don't know. But anyway... I'm going to get some of this on my sponge and I'm just going to put it around my face a little bit. So on my forehead here and here. I'm always terrified of doing this and then leaving a tide mark. So we'll make sure that we don't do that. It just gives a bit more depth to the face really, doesn't it? Yeah, the sun is out today, which is absolutely fantastic. And it was out yesterday as well as I film this. It's about blooming time, I can't tell you. We have been desperate for some warmth, really desperate. And I think it was about 18 yesterday, which I think is probably 70. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so we've done the bronzer. Now, the next thing I'm really excited to show you is, oh, so excited. I went a bit bonks and I bought a load of liquid eyeshadows and then found it really difficult to apply them. However, yesterday I was Googling around on YouTube and I found Smitta Deepak, who I absolutely adore. She is an amazing, not a trained makeup artist, but an amazing demonstrator, of various makeup techniques, all makeup techniques. In fact, there probably isn't one that she hasn't done. She's got over three million followers and I I would, if you're interested in makeup, she's absolutely an amazing person to watch. So I found her video on how to apply liquid eyeshadows. And it's very interesting because it shows that, yes, they are great for some reasons, but actually they need a lot more care and attention than you would think. So let me show you what I do. And also let me quickly say while I'm doing this, Lovely Maggie D, my friend on YouTube, did a great video on Wet n Wild liquid eyeshadows, but you can't get them in the UK. It's just a pain. So all the liquid eyeshadows that I've bought recently are all really expensive, including this REM liquid eyeshadow. I always think that's a funny name for a beauty um, company, given there's a band or was a band called REM. Anyway, this is it here. It's got a nice flat doe foot applicator. Sorry, I should have said it's a nice pinky colour. I'll list the colour down below if you can't read it because it's too small writing at the moment. So what I did was I chose a few pinky but dark pinky colours. I maybe should have gone a bit lighter but at the time I was thinking I don't really wear very light colours on my lid so I need to choose a darker colour but actually this colour is very nice. Let me come close and show you how I apply it. So we're going to pop it on. Oh I should have said you need to prep when you're putting on liquid eyeshadow and have a brush right next to you so that you can immediately blend it out because it dries really quickly. Okay, there we are. So we've got that on because the next thing we're going to do is add some powder blush. Now I know that seems a bit counterintuitive and a bit pointless, 
But the point she was making was that if you don't do that, and she's absolutely right, because this is what I was struggling with. If you start to put liquid eyeshadow up here on very wrinkly eyes like mine, and look how wrinkly they are, you can see. A very elephant hide-ish, very loose skin. If you start to do that, it looks really weird. It looks all sort of rumpled and crumpled. But if you use and blend your liquid eyeshadow once it's dried with a powder eyeshadow in a very similar colour, you get a much better effect. In fact, almost a halo effect. So let me show you. I'm going to use my Dior Backstage palette in Rosewood. And I'm going to use this colour here, which is quite similar to the REM shadow that I've just used. So just get some on my brush here. And I'm going to smooth out the edges. You can see, look how close the colour is. That was a bit of luck, actually, because I didn't know that it was going to be, I didn't know I was going to have a colour that close. But it really works a treat because it's just sort of deepening the colour in the crease. I'm just going to go off camera now, put my eyeliner and my mascara on, and then I'll come back and we'll finish off with some lipstick. Right, so here we are. We've come back. We've put our eyeliner on, mascara on, and I've actually used two because I'm running out of my Lash Clash by YSL. And I'm rather liking the MAC stack, which I think was recommended by Charlotte Holdcroft and I really am quite liking it. It's a very different sort of brush. It's a rubber brush as opposed to a re regular sort of bristly one. But I'm rather liking it. Right, let us move on to the final part of this video where I'm going to show you a new lipstick technique, which again, I have learned from Smitta Deepak. So it's a way to make lipstick last longer. So let me show you what to do. Now, there is a bit of a caveat here in that it, in an ideal world, you would have lovely smooth lips. And my lips are not perfectly smooth at the moment. And I really struggle to find a lip balm that doesn't have fragrance in it. So at the moment, my lips are OK, but they're not amazingly smooth. But let me show you what the technique is. So first you want to get a lip pencil. Now, I'm using a Charlotte Tilbury in a kind of neutral shade. I think it's one of the pillow talks. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to Draw your lips as you normally would, outline your lips, and then you're going to fill them in with the pencil. So that's what they're going to do. Let me come close. There you are. So you can see I filled my lips in with the pencil as well as outlining them. So the next thing we're going to do is take the lipstick, and I'm using Lisa Eldridge's Sunday Matinee. Oh, yeah, I remember buying this last summer, I think. It's a beautiful colour. Look at that, lovely and rosy, very spring like, I think. And we're going to apply that as we normally would. Nice. Then we're going to blot it. And then we're going to get some loose powder and we're going to pat it onto the lips. I know. Now, luckily, I've got some loose powder. I don't usually have any, but I bought this last summer when I went to Sephora. It was one of those little minis at the checkout. So we're going to get a brush. I'm always terrified of loose powder. I know it shouldn't be really, but... Um, I'm just going to get a tiny bit. Oh, that's not a tiny bit at all. Wait a minute, I need to get rid of some of that. Yeah, we don't want to go mad. And then we're just going to pat it over the lips. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. So there you have it. Those are my five tips for looking younger instantly. Well, not quite instantly, obviously, you need to put some makeup on first. But you know what I mean. I really think that these methods of application of makeup are really helping me to look and feel more youthful. I think the lack of the heavy brow, the sort of lighter brow, the blusher application and using cream products and using liquid products, so the liquid products on the eyes. OK, yes, you've got to add a bit of powder eyeshadow, but you saw how quick that was. And also not applying foundation where I don't need it. I mean, I do think my skin looks nice and light. It doesn't look overly made up. I really think that this method of application of makeup has made a difference to the way I look and feel. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I'd be so grateful if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of these methods of application. Would you try any of them? 
Or have you got any tips and tricks that you can share with us? I'd be really interested. And I really mean that because you may have noticed that I've got a different background today. And that's because one of my lovely viewers said that my old background, which was my fireplace, which is actually just off camera over there, just didn't seem appropriate for my videos. So I've listened and I've taken action. And I hope that that shows you that I do really read all your comments and take on board your suggestions. And thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me. It really does. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.